Hi, I'm Dave Barry, Superintendent of Zealand Public Schools, and welcome to the second in a series of videos explaining the iPad rollout for our students. Joining me today is Steve Braunius, our Director of Technology. Steve, thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. This is an exciting time for uh, our students and staff and community at Zena Public Schools. Let's talk about the iPad rollout. Uh, what are, uh, why the iPad? Uh, it's, a, it's a cool story. Um, we really looked at the iPad, we, but before we got to the iPad, there's kind of a back history where we really were looking at what we called portable computing devices. So back two years, approximately two years ago, we had a group of teachers and administrators and staff and parents and board members uh, looking at different things that we needed to do as a district for the future. And uh, we said portable computing device. Uh, we didn't say a laptop or some other technology. We just knew that it was going to be some device that would be in the hands of kids, that would be portable, easy to use. And when we got to the point of actually figuring out that device this past year, the iPad was the fit. It was the one where we didn't expect to end up there, but we saw that that really fit the culture of where we wanted to go in Zealand Public Schools. Now, why the iPad in particular versus maybe another tablet format? What were some of the advantages of, of doing that and going that route? Yeah, the, we really saw with the iPad that it has some, for one, some really neat accessibility features that are great for kids. Uh, the idea is that it has built into most applications where it can read text to kids. Um, kids who have vision issues can actually navigate around on the iPad um, with it actually talking to them. So there's all kinds of neat accessibility things that are, are good for kids. Um, plus we also found that the iPad's been around the longest of those technologies and um, seems to have the most consistent interface through all the different portions of it. Plus there's this other piece where it allows kids to use it uh, even if they don't have internet at home. There's the ability to easily load audio, video, books, those types of resources and use those wherever they might be, even if they were on the side of a field while they're at a game. Well, let alone, I just heard that the, the recent app count now is somewhere 450,000 apps for it. Yeah, absolutely. So it is exciting. How did uh, Zealand Public Schools afford um, iPads and, and this type of technology for all of their students? Yeah, that's why I really like to start with that. We did have a technology plan two years ago that we put in place that outlined all of this. And thankfully, our, our community voted for a bond approximately a year ago. Um, that actually supports this. So that bond had a portion of it that supported technology in the classroom, such as projectors, computers, audio systems, but also this technology for students. Now when we talk about iPads, what, what's the process or timeline for the iPad distribution? Uh, we've been over the summer actually working on getting it into the hands of all of our teachers so they get a chance to play with them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, we plan to have them in the hands of our high school students actually uh, the week of the 29th is when we're planning to get them to most high school students. Um, we also then plan down in the road winter of this year to have them in the hands of our middle school students and then the following school year we would like to get them into our upper elementary classrooms. So it's an exciting time for students. It's a it's a truly a one to one digital learning environment. Exactly. Um, so it's exciting about that. When um, there's a lot of infrastructure that has to occur just for the iPad distribution, we want to talk a little bit about that. How how do we uh, ensure that people are downloading the appropriate apps? What systems are in place to to either monitor the apps and and that whole process? Uh, we actually have been working over the past months to, to get all those systems in place and one of them is a system called Mobile Device Management, MDM, and that's a system that actually allows us to um, purchase applications ahead of time and be able to distribute those to a, a piece of software that's actually on the iPad so students will be able to get those apps right from within there. It also does give us some reporting functionality to al allow us to get an insight of which apps are installed on the different iPads. So it does give us some of those tracking pieces as well. Yeah, excellent. Steve, what we want to do is take a break right at the moment. We want to take a look at a, at a video of some students actually using iPads um, in schools and, and just give us an opportunity to see what st uh, students are using it and how they're using it. So let's take a break and take a look at that video. The 
the iPad has all of the world's learning in it. And access to that at your fingertips seems to open up some new door to some new knowledge. It transforms you. Chicago Public Schools is the third largest district in the U.S. The iPad has created enthusiasm and excitement in our classrooms here at CPS. It's something that you can hold in your hands. It's not heavy. All of the applications, the access to the internet, the research that can be done, being able to outfit so many of our kids with a low-cost machine could be a, a real advantage for a district. I have some students that are struggling with learning their letters and sounds, and with the Super Y app, for example, they're able to hear the letter, trace the letter, so there's a lot of repetition that's helping them catch on. One letter? E. E. They're spelling words that I didn't think they knew how to spell, and I'm always like, wow, who spelled that Mac? I did. Yes. yes. We make apps for early childhood through grade school that are both engaging and educational. We felt Super Y was a natural fit for the iPad. And it's a great tool for learning how to read, learning how to write, to help kids get engaged in the learning anytime, anywhere, and the iPad makes that possible. Hi, I'm Emma. I'm in eighth grade, and the Elements app got me more interested in chemistry. I thought science was boring, chemistry just wasn't fun, it didn't make sense. But I got this app that's not written like a normal textbook. It's interactive and it's written like in a more kid-friendly way. I am a visual learner, and when I can really see the element, it helps me because then I can really visualize how it's used in everyday life. Emma's able to go to the iPad and figure out her own learning style and her own needs and which app best meets those needs. The iPad has helped Emma learn. It's kept her engaged and I think it's excited her. Using the Elements app for my iPad is not required, it's not homework, but it's just fun to do and it's extra learning. And I got an A plus in science. My name is Malik Granetta. This is my third year in medical school. I think the future of medicine is going to be not so much how much knowledge you can hold in your head, but how much knowledge you can put your hands on and access at any given point in time. The iPad expands the creativity and intellectual curiosity of students. As a neuroscientist and as a medical educator, one of the challenges that I saw students facing constantly was just the breadth of the information that they had to master, and they had to master it so quickly. The iPad allows the student to compress 50 pounds worth of books and cards and atlases into a single application that they can carry with them. It allows students to customize that content for their own learning needs and give them a really personalized learning experience. Instead of having to buy a new textbook every year, you can just download the most up-to-date content in real time. They write another chapter, you just download that chapter, replace your old chapter. The iPad changes fundamentally the way I learn. It's kind of like my portable knowledge base. It makes life a whole lot simpler. I am surprised by how much, in a short period of time, the iPad has changed how I teach. I use it literally every day. It makes the learning, I think, more accessible to the students. We use it a lot in terms of having to pull up the internet, looking up articles, things that are relevant to what we're learning in class, the terms that we're looking up through the book. It has engaged me in the class and it has improved my learning a lot because, you know, it's information at your fingertips. I can, on the Inkling text, leave notes to them. It's overlaid on the content. They immediately see those notes that I leave and they can refer back to that. All of my experience in higher education, which totals up to almost 50 years, I've never seen anything that changed the landscape the way this has. 
The iPad has transformed the way our faculty are looking at learning and looking at how they transmit knowledge. It is going to make the biggest difference in the way students acquire, interact with, and use knowledge. It's a little bit like the Oxford English Dictionary must have been greeted when it first was published and people say, oh, look at this treasure trove, or an encyclopedia. And they're both in the iPad at your fingertips. Now you have something that goes beyond anything that people could have imagined. Boy, it's exciting to see all the students learning and engaging, and we're excited about the opportunity for our students in Zealand Public Schools to have iPads to enhance their learning. On behalf of Steve Braunius, our Director of Technology, this is Dave Barry saying thank you for your time. Stay tuned for more videos in our series, iPad Rollout for Zealand Students. For more information about the iPad, go to ilearn.zps.org.